Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Denny Sanford Premier Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, for a little Bison pregame show. I'm Joe Thompson, along with Isaac Dinison. Now, Isaac, we're going to talk about a little bit about this upcoming semifinal game for NDSU versus Western Illinois. What are some of the key factors that are going to play into this game for the Bison? Now, we saw yesterday against Oral Roberts, the Bison got very aggressive in the second half, drawing a lot of contact and getting to the free throw line 32 times in the second half. I kind of think that Western Illinois is going to want to slow the game down, and that means usually in slower games you're going to want to try to get more aggressive and against the opposing defense and try to draw more contact. I think NDSU's mindset in the second half is going to, is going to carry over into this game, largely in part because Western Illinois does have some players that – we saw against South Dakota State get into a little bit of foul trouble. Brandon Gilbeck, for instance, their yeah. se the Leatherneck senior center, seven feet tall. He had four fouls in that game against South Dakota State. It's going to be important, I think, for Rocky Cruiser and the Bison wing players to get into the lane and draw some contact and get the number one shot blocker in the nation out of the game quickly. So, and speaking of Western Illinois players, uh, another top player, Kobe Webster, he's the best scorer on the team by far, is averaging, I believe, over 16 points a game. How important is it going to be for the Bison to slow him down? And I think the Bison have a pretty good counter to Webster, number 10 in purple, and that'll be number zero in gold, Vinny Shahid. He was neutralized yesterday against Oral Roberts. He didn't really have that great of an impact on the game until very late when he got a couple of layups. But otherwise, I think it's going to be a nice battle, I think, between Shahid and Webster, who's going to, because they're both about, they're very comparable in height and very comparable in play style. It'll be interesting to see who ends up defending the other better in this game. It's going to be a nice, I think, I think these teams match up pretty well against each other regardless of what the records say I think that point guard matchup is going to be one to look out for and speaking of other Bison players like Vinny Shahid who didn't really sh didn't really make a big impact in the game against uh, Oral Roberts yesterday w are there some other Bison players you think need to step it up a little bit either as a starter or off the bench you know, that's a tough question. The Bison had a pretty complete effort, I'd say, yesterday against Oral Roberts. Top to bottom, they played almost all their guys on their roster. And really, you know, we saw Tyson Ward really elevate his play yesterday, getting a lot of, drawing a lot of contact and being very efficient on his shots. I'm not really sure if there's really too much of an answer of someone that had, had a struggling game that needs to step up. Maybe other than Rocky Cruiser, he was not overly efficient with his shots yesterday, but I think his impact on the defensive side of the floor was very much impactful may not have always showed up in the box score other than his four blocks yesterday but I think Rocky Cruiser may may want to try to get himself going a little bit early in this game just so that he doesn't finish three for eight shooting again like he did yesterday and back to what you said about Gilbeck getting into a lot of foul trouble and just really Western Illinois in general getting into a lot of foul trouble they had a couple of players foul out uh, do you think the Bison are going to be looking to attack those same players and get them into foul trouble again? I think so. I, and, and this is what I mentioned just a little bit ago. Obviously, North Dakota State shooting 32 free throws yesterday. They called very little fouls in the first half in that game against Oral Roberts. The referees tightened the game up in the second half. And I kind of think the NDSU is going to want to go out, go, go out into this game starting out with that exact same mindset, trying to get in the lane, draw contact and use their eighth best free throw shooting in the entire country, at least coming into yesterday, that they used to their advantage, although they did not make probably as many free throws as they wanted to yesterday, but still there's that statistic on their side. They're very exceptional at shooting free throws. Jared Samuelson, Rocky Cruiser, and Tyson Ward all stepped up when they needed to yesterday, and I think that's going to translate to the rest of the team here today. I would think so, at least. Do you have a, not like a prediction, but do you have a guess of what the final score might be? Final score is difficult to predict, especially in basketball. Um, I did predict, I guess, the national championship football score. I'm not going to make one today just because it's basketball. There's so many points to be scored and so many factors to go into this game. Mm -hmm. Leading scorers may foul out. Leading scorers may go cold from the field. But the Bison are pretty consistent at scoring above 70 points and, and also pretty consistent at scoring 80 points as well. It's just a matter of whether um, – each team can execute, and you know I would expect North Dakota State to come out victorious in this one at least. I, I won't give you a score prediction, but yeah. I think North Dakota State should come out victorious in yeah, this I one. Yeah, we'll, I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens later at 6 o'clock on Midco Sports Network or on ESPN+. Plus. For those of you who want to watch the game, well, we're going to sign off for now. For Bison Information Network, I'm Joe Thompson. And I'm Isaac Dinison. We'll see you after the game.